light. Light is a very familiar name that makes our life bright. It comes from many sources, but the ultimate source of light is sun. Light is the form of energy which gives us the sensation of seeing objects. How do we see things? The objects that emit light on their own are called luminous objects and the ones that do not are called non-luminous objects. For example, sun, stars, torch, bulb, etc. are luminous objects and chairs, tables, books, etc. are non-luminous objects. Luminous bodies are the sources of light. Non-luminous bodies can be seen only in the presence of luminous bodies. When the light coming from a luminous body strikes and gets reflected from a non-luminous body, it enters our eyes. These rays of light fall on the retina at the back of our eye, from where they reach the brain through nerves. The brain interprets the image formed on the retina, enabling us to see the object. We see the luminous object from the light it emits and the non-luminous object from the light it reflects. Hence, we can conclude that there are three conditions that are necessary for us to see an object. There must be a source of light. The light must strike the object. The light must be reflected from the object to the eye. Reflection of light. The bouncing back of light from the surface of an object is called reflection of light. When we stand in front of a mirror or a shiny metal surface, we can see not only our image but the images of all the things around us. This happens because the mirror or metal surface reflects light coming from all the objects. Laws of Reflection Some important terms related to reflection of light. Incident Ray It is a ray of light which strikes any reflecting surface. Reflected Ray It is a ray of light that gets reflected from the reflecting surface after reflection. Point of Incidence It is a point at which the incident ray strikes the reflecting surface. Normal it is a perpendicular drawn at the point of incidence. Angle of incidence. It is an angle formed between the incident ray and the normal. Angle of reflection. It is an angle formed between the reflected ray and the normal. And the incident ray AO. The reflected ray OB and the normal all lie in the same plane. Thus, the two laws of reflection are Law 1. The incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal to the reflecting surface lie in the same plane. Law 2. The angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. The laws of reflection apply to all reflecting surfaces, whether plane or curved. Image formed in a plane mirror. A plane mirror is any mirror with a flat reflective surface. They are polished surfaces coated with mercury such that they reflect most of the light falling on them. It reflects light at the same angle it hits the mirror. So, there is very little distortion of the image, if any. The mirror hanging in our bathroom is a plane mirror. Characteristics of image formation by a plane mirror The characteristics of an image formed by a plane mirror are the images formed behind the mirror, it is a virtual image which cannot be taken on the screen. The size of the image and the object is the same. The image formed by the plane mirror is erect and not inverted. The image will be formed as far behind the mirror as the object is in front of it. That is why you find that when you move closer to the mirror, your image also seems to move closer. Similarly, when you move away from the mirror, your image also seems to move away. The image formed by a plane mirror is laterally inverted. Lateral Inversion Image formed by a plane mirror is a virtual mirror which looks almost the same. The right side of the object appears to be on the left side. Similarly, left side of the object appears to be on the right. This is known as lateral inversion. Although light falls on and is reflected by all kinds of surfaces, we can only see the images of objects from polished surfaces like mirrors. Beam of light A group of light rays coming from the same source in the same direction is called beam of light. There are 
three types of beams of light parallel beam of light beam of light which are parallel to each other convergent beam of light beam of light which actually meet or converge or appear to meet at a point divergent beam of light beam of light which actually spreads or appears to spread or diverge from a point when a parallel beam of light falls on a polished surface it is reflected back in one direction whereas when a parallel beam of light falls on a rough surface it is reflected back in many directions on the basis of reflecting surface we can categorize reflection into two types regular reflection it is also called specular reflection it is the reflection from polished surfaces reflected rays are parallel to each other the image is seen in the reflecting surface it can be seen in a plain mirror unused stainless steel plate water etc diffused reflection it is also called irregular reflection it is the reflection from rough or irregular surfaces reflected rays move in various directions the image is diffused or irregular it can be seen in scratched mirrors rippling water etc multiple images multiple image is the phenomenon in which we get multiple images of the object because the image formed by one mirror acts as an object for the second mirror the number of images formed by mirrors kept at an angle can be calculated by using the formula n is equal to 360 degree upon theta minus 1 where n is the number of images and theta is the angle between the two mirrors kaleidoscope it is an instrument which is based on multiple images it consists of three strips of plane mirrors placed at an angle inside a tube dispersion of light ever observed bands of beautiful colors on thin oil films on water in the puddles these bands are formed because both the top and the bottom layers of the oil film reflect the white light this splits white light into various colors this phenomenon of splitting of white light into its component colors is called dispersion of light the set of colors formed on splitting of white light is called the spectrum of white light lenses a lens is a transparent piece of glass or plastic with curved surfaces it is a type of mirror which refracts the light instead of reflection when a ray of light passes from one transparent medium to another it generally changes its direction this change in the direction of the path of a light ray when it passes from one transparent medium to another is called refraction here the medium is lens lenses are of various types but the two most important types are convex lens or converging lens and concave lens or diverging lens convex lens or converging lens these lenses are thick in the middle light rays that pass through these lens are brought closer together concave lens or diverging lens these lenses are thinner in the middle than the edges light rays that pass through these lenses are spread out important terms related to lenses the center of the lens is called the optical center o a ray of light that passes through the optical center emerges on the other side without any changes the principal axis is the line passing through the optical center and perpendicular to the surface of the lens the principal focus of a convex lens is a point on the principal axis on which rays parallel to principal axis appear to converge the principal focus of a concave lens is a point on the principal axis from which rays parallel to the principal axis appear to diverge the focal length of a lens is the distance between the optical center and principal focus images formed by the lenses you can locate the image formed by a lens by tracing the paths of any two rays coming from a point on the object after refracted by the lens an image is formed at the point where the rays meet or appear to meet consider any two light rays a ray parallel to the principal axis in case of convex lens the ray passes through the focus after refraction 
In case of concave lens, the ray diverges after refraction. A ray passing through the optical center O. The ray passes through the lens undeviated. A ray passing through focus F. The ray becomes parallel to the principal axis after being refracted through the lens. Image formation in convex lens. In case of convex lens, the image is usually inverted, real and smaller than the object. When the object is kept too close to the convex lens, the image is erect, virtual and larger than the object. The case is of image formation in a convex lens are Object beyond 2F When the object is placed at a location beyond 2F, the image will be formed in between 2F and F on the other side of the lens. Image formed in this case is real, inverted and size of image is smaller than size of the object. Object at 2F When the object is placed at 2F, the image will be formed at 2F on the other side of the lens. Image formed in this case is real, inverted and size of image is same as that of the object. Object between 2F and F when the object is placed between 2F and F, the image will be formed beyond 2F on the other side of the lens. Image formed in this case is real, inverted and size of image is larger than size of the object. Object at F When the object is located at the focal point, no image is formed as refracted rays emerge parallel to each other. It is assumed that the parallel rays appear to meet at infinity. Image formed in this case is real, inverted and size of image is highly enlarged than size of the object. Object between F and O When the object is placed between F and O, the image will be formed somewhere on the same side of the lens as the object. Image formed in this case is virtual and erect. Size of the image is larger than the size of the object. Object at infinity when the object is placed at a very large distance, like the sun, image formed at F. Image formed in this case is real, inverted and size of the image is smaller than size of the object. Human Eye Human Eye is a natural optical instrument having a lens and a screen. Structure of a Human Eye Human Eye is almost spherical with a slight bulge in the front. In most cases, it is 2.5 cm long. It has eyelids that act as shutters and protect it from dust and injury. Internally, it consists of the different parts. Cornea, it is the front bulging part of the eye. It is made of thin transparent tissues. It covers the front of the eye. Iris, it is the colored part of the eye behind the cornea. It increases or decreases the size of the pupil to control the amount of light entering the eye. Pupil It is the tiny hole in the middle of the iris. It allows light to enter the eye. Lens It lies behind the pupil and the iris. It is transparent and is made up of many concentric layers. It focuses light to form an image on the retina. Retina it is a lining just behind the eyeball. It acts as a screen for image formation. It is sensitive to light. It has light-sensitive receptors called rods and cones. When light falls on these receptors, they send signals to the brain through the optic nerve. The brain then interprets the image. Optic nerve It is a bundle of nerves beginning from the brain and entering the eyeball from behind. It carries visual messages to the brain from retina. Ciliary muscles. It is a ring of muscles which holds the lens in position. They also control the focal length of the eye lens by contracting and expanding. Sclera. It is the visible white part of the eye filled with watery fluid. It protects the internal parts of the eye. Blind spot. It is a portion of the retina where the optic nerves enters the eyeball. It does not have rods and cones and is insensitive to light. Images forming on this spot are not visible. Working of an eye The light rays from an object enter the eye through pupil. A real inverted and highly diminished image is formed on the retina.
the rods and cones of the retina get activated and convert the image into electric impulses or signals. These signals are taken by the optic nerve to the brain. While the signals are transmitted, the inverted image is re-inverted and the brain sees it as an erect image and helps us to sense the actual object. Persistence of Vision Even after the object is removed in front of our eye, its image is retained on the retina for about 1 16th of a second. This is called persistence of vision. Thus, persistence of vision is the ability of an eye to continue to see an image for a very short period of time, even after the object is removed. Power of Accommodation It is easy for a person with normal eyesight to see both nearby and far-off objects clearly. This happens because of the action of the ciliary muscles on the lens. When the eye is focusing on far-off objects, the ciliary muscles relax and the thickness of the lens reduces. This helps us to see far-off objects clearly. On the other hand, when we look at an object close to us, the ciliary muscles contract, making the lens thicker by reducing its focal length. This increases the converging power of the lens and we can see the object clearly. The ability of the eye to alter the focal length of its lens so that it can clearly see all the objects within a certain range is called accommodation. The least distance at which a normal eye can see an object clearly is called near point of the eye. 25 cm is the near point for a normal eye. The maximum distance at which a normal eye can see an object clearly is called the far point of the eye. The far point of the normal eye is infinity. Defects of vision and their correction. Nutritional deficiencies, wrong reading habits, age and genetic factors can sometimes cause defects of vision. Carelessness towards eyes can also cause eye defects. Some of the defects of vision are short-sightedness or myopia. Persons suffering from short-sightedness can see nearby objects clearly while distant objects appear blurred. In such case, the image of a distant object is formed in front of the retina and not at the retina itself. This defect is also called myopia. It can be corrected by wearing spectacles with concave lenses. Long-sightedness or hypermetropia. Persons suffering from long-sightedness can see objects that are far away clearly, but nearby objects appear blurred to them. This defect generally occurs in old age when the ciliary muscles become weak and are unable to thicken the eye lens. This defect is also called hypermetropia. It can be corrected by wearing spectacles with convex lens. Cataract Sometimes in old age, the eye lens becomes cloudy or opaque, leading to blurred or dimmed vision. This defect is called cataract. It can be treated surgically or through laser by replacing the eye lens with a new artificial lens. If not corrected in time, it can also lead to loss of vision. Eye care Eye care are very important parts of our body. We must take good care of them. Precautions that can be taken to take proper care of the eyes are Wash your eyes with clean water at least twice a day. Do not rub your eyes if something falls in it. Immediately wash it with water and consult a doctor if the problem persists. Avoid reading in dim or very bright light and in moving vehicles. Consult a doctor in case of an injury. Blink your eyes from time to time while doing a work that needs concentration like reading, working on the computer or watching television. Do not look at very bright light or the sun directly. Consult a doctor if you are unable to read clearly what is written on the blackboard. There may be a defect in the eye that needs treatment. It is important to eat a balanced diet with sufficient quantity of vitamin A to keep our eyes healthy. Raw carrots, broccoli, green vegetables, cod liver oil, eggs, Milk and milk products, fruits like papaya and mango, are rich sources of vitamin A. Vitamin C and vitamin E are also good for eyes. Visually challenged people Visually challenged people are those people whose vision is extremely poor or they are blind. They are unable to see because either their cornea, 
eye lens, retina or optic nerve fails to perform its function properly. These people make use of other senses like sense of touch and hearing or man-made aids to identify things. These can be categorized into two types, non-optical aids, optical aids. Non-optical aids. Non-optical aids include visual aids. These help in providing the required size of words, appropriate light intensity, and material at proper distances for people whose vision is extremely poor. Auditory aids. Using the sense of hearing. These aids include tape recorders, compact discs or CDs, talking book, etc. Tactual aids using the sense of touch. They include braille writer, slate and stylus. These help visually challenged people to read and write. Electric aids. Aids such as talking calculators for calculation, closed circuit television, CCTV for enlarging printed material, use of audio, CDs and voice boxes with computers for listening and writing the desired text, etc. are included in this category. Optical aids. Optical aids can be used in case of curable blindness or people whose vision is extremely poor. These include lenses, different kinds of lenses like bifocal lenses, contact lenses and tinted lenses are used to correct visual limitations. Magnifiers and telescopic aids. These aids help visually challenged people to view chalkboard and class demonstrations. The Braille system. The most common non-optical aid used by visually challenged people is Braille. It is a tactual aid which is based on the sense of touch. The Braille system was developed by Louis Braille. Braille is an approach that enables the blind to read and write. In this, the text is printed on a thick sheet of paper in the form of a pattern of raised dots. The dotted symbols represent letters, numbers, punctuation marks, etc. There are 63 symbols or characters in Braille. Each symbol is represented by a cell which consists of two columns of three dots each. One or more dots in a cell may be embossed, raised to form the symbol. A visually challenged person can feel these raised dots with the fingers and recognize the letters. This way, they are also able to read books and other text printed in Braille. Braille can be produced by hand or by using machines like typewriter or computers. Plain English text can be converted to Braille by using special computer software. Special keyboards based on Braille are available for blinds now.